Spain after the Civil War, that's when Pau Casals played his last tone on cello. This was a silent protest for 40 years against war and dictatorship. Casals finally did play again, 1971, in front of the United Nations, awarded with the UN Peace Medal. And that's what he said. The birds in the sky sing peace, peace, peace. And then he made sing his cello again with a beautiful Catalonian melody called Song of the Birds, which has become a hymn of peace. Now I know there are very smart people here today and some of you may guess it. this melody you've just heard was the song of the birds. And while some of you maybe were deeply moved or touched, others will have been wondering, who's that woman with that giant instrument and what is she up to? I will come to that part in a bit, but before I would like you to help understand in some 20 minutes what I myself am still beginning to understand after almost 20 years. So I invite you to walk a bit in my shoes. As I am a musician, I'm not so much accustomed to do PowerPoint presentations. Um, to be honest, this is my first one, and this is the reason why I'm doing it this way, with a music stand in front of me, and I hope you are with me and maybe remembering your own first presentation. Let me just put my instrument beside. So at age 14, I visited a concert of the famous clarinet player Giora Feitmann in Berlin at the Berlin Philharmonic. And I was deeply impressed by the King of Klezmer's play. Immediately, I decided to become a famous clarinetist as well. What else? <laughs> An ambitious decision for a teenager who never had played clarinet before. But as my mother used to say, where there's a will, there's a way. She was right, and as you will see, her motto um, was quite useful later on, too. So this was my first life-changing moment via music. And that's the first thing I would like you to reflect, how many of you are remembering moments in their lives where music had some deeply moving impact. Please raise your hands. And um, yes, of course, <laughs> um, I was expecting this. 
many of you are making this. Um, yeah, music is moving people's lives. And in my own case, it motivated me to find out all I could about this instrument, to practice a million of hours or more. <laughs> and finally, I studied classical clarinet and piano. And I found out what I am not. I'm not a classical musician. The music we had to study was beautiful, but it was not like the music Gyura Feitmann was playing. He has had something beyond the tones, something invisible you cannot describe with words. I started looking for it without knowing if it really existed, just listening to my gut instinct, I began my research. One of the best ways to follow your dreams is traveling. And probably the best way to find out what you are looking for is asking those who have already found it. So I traveled to Israel and I visited Maestro Gyura Feitman himself. I took a master class and we played together at the Tzfat Klezma Festival. We are still in contact and um, he's even playing some compositions by me and I had the big chance to learn a lot about music, but even more about people, musical freedom and connection. And I also find out what I am not. I'm not a klezmer musician. I was still a searching artist. I could still smell the scent of my own inner music somewhere out there. And so now I knew traveling worked for me. I went on, I traveled to Argentina. I danced tango the whole night. I took composition lessons every day. By the way, this is the piano on which I was practicing. I really tried my best. I even ate tons of Argentine beef just to find out what I am not. I'm not a tango musician. Still thirsty for my own musical expression, I decided to check out a place with definitely more water than Buenos Aires. I traveled all across Switzerland, visiting its lakes and rivers and waterfalls. Deeply inspired by them, I composed water music. Maybe the water had an answer for me. After half a year of climbing on the highest mountains, and swimming in every water I could find, I became incredibly lonely. My mermaid life in one of the most beautiful sceneries in the world had somehow turned boring. So I, to escape my solitude, I got in touch with local Swiss musicians. I had no money to engage them, but luckily most of them were curious about that girl composing water music. I met some amazing people, learned a lot about Swiss culture, and got to play some small concerts in small hotels, and even smaller concerts on high mountains for the birds and the cows. It was beautiful, but in the end, I knew for sure I'm not a Swiss musician. Back in Berlin, I got a call from the Big Apple. A nice jazz club invited me to play a concert in New York City. The Americans somehow loved my crazy mix of not being classical, tango, klezma, jazz, water, whatever. <laughs> they wanted me for being a seeker. This was a daring step to take, but curious for the melting pot, I took it. There was no way to bring any of my co-musicians from Israel, Argentina, Switzerland, or Germany over to the States, so I had to find a new co-musician in New York. I googled. Amazing New York-based cello player that is open for culturally diverse music rooted in tango and klezmer, and of course, well-informed by mountains, rivers, and Swiss alphorns. That's how I found Noah. He's a Brooklyn-based cello player and an awesome musician with a Jewish background. He's um, playing in a rock, rock group. He's making um, film music, and he has a deep interest in Hindu spirituality. So I found another melting pot on two legs. We quickly found a catchy concert title, 
Berlin meets Brooklyn. When we discussed what each of us associated with these two words, we quickly realized that the Berlin Wall and the Brooklyn Bridge um, were pretty good metaphors for our musical intention to tear down walls and build bridges. And so we did. Please have a look. And I need a little help for showing the video. <laughs> So the whole concept did indeed tear down walls. Our project found the interest of the German mission and the Berlin marketing organization Visit Berlin. And we had a rush of success in New York, in London, in Berlin. And at the end of the tour, Visit Berlin invited me to play in Istanbul at the bridge between Europe and Asia. And finally, after having crossed so many lakes, rivers, oceans, and cultural chasms, I found out who I am. I'm a bridge builder. Wherever I went and wherever I go today, I want to connect people on stage and in the audience. People who come from very diverse cultural backgrounds, people with prejudices, people who don't speak the same language. My music, my, my music is language. My language is music. And my experience is that it's not important if you call it classical, tango, klezma, jazz, water, whatever. Music is at the same time diverse and able to bring diversity together. It creates common ground, a possibility to communicate without words. Music contains harmony and disharmony. It has the power to remind us of the richness of diversity as well as of the possibility to create unity. And so I've begun another journey, the journey of my bridge building profession. I'm working on a platform called Bridges of Music. It's still pretty brand new. I can't show you a fancy video yet. I even have no design website yet. But as you know, where's a will, there's a way. And my current way starts locally and fivefold. Firstly, I'm building bridges by meeting embassies, ambassadors, and we are creating a concert tour through as many of the diplomatic missions as possible. Like a journey around the world, but inside of the city Berlin, a city with more than 190 nations. Secondly, I'm building bridges to planning to bring guest musicians from as many countries as possible to Berlin. So far, the network includes Swiss choir music, Pakistani tabla players, Argentine tango dancers, and Palestinian classical musicians. Thirdly, I'm building bridges by inspiring musicians and audiences with the music, by the music we play and compose. 
We want to pay tribute to our differences. We want to celebrate our diversity and we want to discover our common language. Fourthly, I'm building bridges by reaching out to institutions like the ICD or the Daniel Barenboim Academy, platforms of peace via cultural exchange. And finally, I'm building bridges by filming the whole process and working on a documentary that might inspire other musicians to become part of a community of bridge builders. So this is what I do with my clarinet, my piano, millions of hours on the computer and the telephone, and with all my heart. I'm building bridges using my musicality to inspire meetings in diversity. As you can imagine, I meet pretty diverse people this way to keep this somehow organized, and yes, I'm actually quite German in that respect. I ask every one of the people I meet to share their most inspiring cultural experience. What was touching them and why? I got to hear so many impressive and intense memories, and I want to end my presentation by sharing one of them. Turkey countryside. Many men in a bar, and a group of foreign musicians is entering. After some drinks, the Turkish men are asking the strangers if they would like to play with them. Sure. So the men are building a big circle, embracing each other by the shoulder, and then the men are starting to sing one tone together, just one tone altogether. The foreign musicians are confused. They are used to play millions of tones in one second, so the band leader is risking another tone for a change. Now the Turkish men are confused, but soon they are finding the second tone as well, and they are relaxing, and everybody is singing the second tone together. All together, one tone. This is music too. For some of you, that may be a bit too theoretical, as at least some of you are not band leaders. Um, so let's build a final bridge from theory to practice, and let's do something memorable together. What I would like you to do right now is please stand up, build a circle as good as possible in this room. Maybe we go here to the side. Maybe we go here. To you want to? I think there's, there's easier. Or you connect. Yeah, like this. You do it very well, you know. If there's a will, there's a way.